Okay, um... Nothing to do but press on, I guess. How are you doing, Mars? Are you holding up alright? Mars crosses her arms and sulks. What is the point of having all these kudos if I can't actually use them to, like, buy stuff we need? Like, hello? It's not like I can mail order more supplies through the wormhole. Mars, we're facing civiliza civilizational collapse right now, which granted, I guess, completes and utter destruction of the value of currencies, a component piece, but I think we've got slightly more pressing aspects of our civilizational collapse to deal with. How, how are you, Tangent? You Tangent friends. I just don't understand, she says. Why now? Why does this keep getting worse? Tangent, tangent. Now is not the time for emotions. We need your level-headed, your normal level-headedness level right now is what we need. Maybe. I, I don't know. We've got, like, n no infrastructure left. I, I don't even know if the rest of my friends are alive. Wh where the heck are they? <laughs> um, Dad, how are you, you okay? Are we going to be able to rebuild hydroponics any ever? It's been hard to talk to your dad about everything. Lose your mom, and losing the colony right after. It's too much to take. Neither of you know what to say. Yeah, fair enough, I guess. Hey, Cal. I know it's hard, Cal says, fiddling nervously with a tassel on his shirt. But I just think, what would your mom do right now? She won't complain, that's for sure. I suppose not. Jis? Jis is examining a bit of rubble, turning it over in his hands. I wonder if we're ever gonna find, like, alien tech, he says. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, it would be a nice distraction from civilizational collapse, that's for sure. Uh, and what even can we do? Like, we could probably... I imagine we could go on out on expedition. Never mind. Uh, I guess this is our only choice. Engineering. Oh, we can rebuild! Yay! Engineering is crammed with facilities and what belongings they've salvaged from the destroyed living quarters. You can spend time in your crowded temporary lodging in the classroom or help the adults try to fix things. We don't have time to mourn. We gotta rebuild. What's rebuilding do for us exactly? Plus three toughness, plus three organi organizing, plus five kudos, and plus ten stress. And it's what we gotta do. Let's get to work. The first month of quiet passes, each day plodding one after the other. You still have trouble sleeping in the classroom barracks. But there's nowhere else to go. Every day you wake up with the others and try to make the best of it. Grief and anger come in waves, not just for you, but... For everyone, some days are better than others. You're assigned to help rebuild the walls. The first part of the month is spent just dragging away the wreckage, sorting it into salvage or recycling. By the time that's done, crews disassembling parts of the stratospheric have delivered enough salvage that you can begin work patching up the walls. A sense of urgency permeates the crew. After everything, people need to feel safe. Jis is on the work crew with you, something he does begrudgingly. Paul's didn't help the first time. He grumbles whenever anyone asks his opinion. We should just tear them all down and live like the animals do. If someone planted a bunch of buildings on my land, I'd be pissed off too. Well, you know what, Jis? I get what you're saying. However, like... Ultimately, nature is a game of selfishness, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of plants and animals here that we're intruding upon, but, and, and they have their motives and goals trying to, you know, survive, reproduce, raise the next generation and so on, but you know what, so do we. So do we, and we have just as much right to pursue our own species' interest as those as other animals do to, have to pursue theirs, so. We're going to work hard, we're going to build these walls up, stronger than ever before, and we are going to survive here. By the end of the month, you've made noticeable progress. 
There are other priorities and not a lot of construction material, but when last year's mushwood harvest is done drying out, you'll be able to do more. Even if Dis is right that it didn't help the first time, it's better than nothing. To work we go. Goal of 32. Shouldn't be too hard. Probably. You can get a 6, and a 6, and a 6. That's 24 right there. An iron stomach. Science fair champion. Exactly 32. Amazing. What? I, I, I missed? I could have I could have gotten a score of 34. Man, man, man. Oh well. The sun's finally dawn again on your birthday. You wake early and climb to the top of engineering to watch the first sun's watery rays break the horizon as the wormhole recedes across the sky. Dawn should represent hope after a long period of darkness, but this light only reveals the full extent of the damage to the colony. You've been having trouble sleeping, like most people. It's hard to find rest crammed into the classroom with all the other kids and their families. But every time you close your eyes, you see. You shake your head to clear the memories. You pull your blanket more tightly around your shoulders. Not your blanket. That one's gone. And stare out as the sun rises on the horizon, meager and sickly. Hey, kiddo. You hear? Then your dad comes and sits down beside you. I was looking for you. Nice view, huh? At least we got a rooftop patio out of the deal. He laughs a little at his own joke, then just sort of trails off with a sigh afterward. He puts his arm around your shoulders, and you sit in silence for a while, watching the sunrise pick out all the broken glass littering the fields, glimmering like a field of stars. Neither of you really know what to say. It's clear your dad feels like he has to give you a pep talk, but there's an oppressive nature to the silence that makes it feel impossible for either of you to start. Eventually, he just sighs and his shoulders slump. I know things seem pretty bad right now, he says, squinting into the sunrise. It sounds like it's taking all his effort to not cry, but it'll get better. It has to. Right? You're not so sure. At least, your mom wasn't here to see this, he mutters. That's the silver lining, I guess. You watch the sunrise together for a few more minutes. After a bit, your dad musters up a brave smile and pulls out a little box tied with a piece of gardening twine. Happy birthday, my little rutabaga, he says. You know what it is before you open it. Your old medallion. The one your dad made, with the sun on it to represent Earth, was broken during the attack. In all the chaos, you didn't even notice, but your dad did. It made you a new one. It's just like you remembered. A similar design, with a wormhole this time, to represent Vertumna. Oh, sun medallion too. Plus five to challenges. Hmm. That's not bad. You thank him and squint out at the swirling wormhole, still barely visible in the brightening sky. It's so massive and awe-inspiring this time of year, but it always seems to herald disaster. You're happy to watch it fade away into the daylight. Your dad slaps you on the back. What a birthday, huh? Here's hoping they all get better from here. You both head back downstairs to the wreckage of the canteen, where they've put up temporary roofing with whatever tarps and scraps could be found. The colony of nanoprinters, the few that still run, have been working day and night to replace the necessities of life, but larger construction projects are going to take some time. Aunt Anne has coaxed the kitchen nanoprinters into making soy gruel and pressed bars. Life-sustaining, but depressing. You and the other colonists eat your breakfast in stony silence as you mentally prepare for the day. Chief Administrator Seek has taken over as interim governor until the council can elect someone new. Last week, they held a mass funeral for everyone who died. There's talk of turning the stratospheric the stratospheric's destroyed front half into a memorial shrine after everything useful has been salvaged. There's still so much to do. Alright, mid-quiet. I take it. No usable structures yet. Probably similar. Yeah, yeah. 
It seems everyone's saying basically the same thing. So back to engineering we go. Got to put in our uh, our efforts, our time. Engineering. Uh, let's rebuild. You're assigned to help out in geoponics. The agriculturists have been working hard at trying to salvage what they can of the ruined fields and the destroyed greenhouses, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Your dad has taken over as chief cultivator. Succeeding your mom was already difficult for him. And now there's this. He's never been the kind of guy to hide from hard work, but he's been pretty distant lately. Cal's working in geoponics too, of course. He smiles when he sees you. Hey, Solana. There's lots of stuff to do. What do you want to work on? Let's see, greenhouses, the fields, or animal pens. I, knew, I, I think step one has to be getting the, the infrastructure back up and running, right? That means either repair the greenhouses or rebuild the animal pens. Um... Then the question is, which one is more important? Uh... I don't know, I mean, we ha we've had pretty bad luck with the native plants thus far. Granted, I will say, I know those beans weren't exactly the best, but they were probably better than starvation, right? And we eat loads of stuff in the modern day that's not good for you, but, you know, it's better than starvation, so. I think maybe we axe the beans a bit prematurely. Um, anyways... I haven't really heard much about what we're doing with animals, so, you know, maybe that's a field uh, that, that can show more promise than the plant-based agriculture. So, we'll try animal pens, yeah? Says the person with very little animal skill. More animal skill than combat skill, though. The pens only suffered minor damage during the attack. Weirdly, most of the damage seems to have come from inside the pens, as if the normally tame animals had been stirred into a frenzy. Hmm. Perhaps, like, the natural wildlife gets, like, stir-crazy in, uh... What, what do we call that the one season again? Yeah. Glow. In glow. Maybe it has some sort of psychological effect on them. And that's why everything goes crazy then. Just a theory. Um, yes. Tangent is also here, though it's not to help hammer and nail things. She's studying the animals, trying to figure out what could have influenced them. She takes blood and hair samples and readings with some sort of complicated brain scanning device. Interesting, is all she says, not explaining her findings to you or Cal. Everyone is worried that this will be the final nail in the coffin for your food supply after the famine last year. You try not to think about it too hard. Instead, focus on just doing what you can to help rebuild. Let's get to work. <sighs> you know, the new am- or is it an amulet or whatever it's called? I'm, I'm realizing. The Sun Medallion 2. Well, okay, I was good. Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's just objectively better than the, the Photophoner. Because basically, this is like getting a plus one to all the cards, but it's even actually slightly better than that, because on multi-step challenges, we'll get that plus five each step. Whereas this could get a maximum of three, four, five. This can get five, 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 fifteen. Fifteen free points, and... Okay. So definitely, at the next opportunity, we'll be switching out the photo Honor for the Sun Medallion. And then I guess there is the question, then, of would I rather have photo Honor or Superhero Cape? Because double bonus for straights is pretty good. But, is that better than plus one for each item? Not sure. Anyways, we gotta rebuild the colony. Um, this hand doesn't seem as good as last time. Like, uh, clearly you put this here, and then you get crawling. That way, crawling is worth something. Put a five there, so it's something. Get a grand feast there, so you get a pair. Oh, plus two cards with gems. That has a gem. Lame. Okay. Well, that just sucks. Uh, is there any way I can make this suck less? Plus one change suit to that. Um, plus one. And you can push through and get like... 
I, also, I don't think any of these are going to be super helpful. I think we gotta push through here. Yeah, that was the best score we could give out without using items. Oh. You're eating in the mess tents when you hear something rumbling. Your bowl and cuts will start rattling. People look around in alarm. Could it be another attack? So soon? You begin to hear shouting from outside. Someone runs into the tent. There's something falling from the sky! They shout. It's on fire! You join the crowd of people leaving your temporary structures to gather in the colony square. People are squinting up into the milky, quiet sunlight, pointing and gesturing wildly. It's impossible to miss the thing hurtling towards you from space. It's like a great big ball of fire coming straight for you. Is this it? Is this the end? After all you've been through, a meteor is gonna land in the middle of your already ruined colony and kill you all. What the? It's a ship. Mars grabs your shoulder. It's another ship, she exclaims. Look, look, it's another spaceship from Earth. Excited ripples through the crowd. Could it be? You stare up, unbelieving at the rapidly approaching ship. The flames of its entry into the atmosphere dissipate, but a thick calm of greasy black smoke trails behind it. Soon you can hear the whistle of it ripping through the atmosphere at terminal velocity. That is uh, not a controlled descent. Uh, it's an enormous ship coming at you way too fast. Oh, also, hold on, not to interrupt things, but I think now would be a great time if we can to uh, swap out our can't change gear during the events. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's an enormous ship coming at you way too fast. The ship's reverse thrusters fire, trying to slow it down so it doesn't smash into a billion pieces when it hits the planet. Everyone scatters to take, to take cover. You crouch behind some rocks, throw your arms over your head, and squeeze your eyes shut. Yeah, if that was gonna kill you, that's not gonna save you. I doubt. I, I don't think. Well, we'll see though. You hear the massive spaceship touch gra down in geoponics, plowing through the fields and grinding over what was left of the greenhouses. I will say, what sort of luck is this? Like, and I'm not even sure if it's good or bad luck yet, because we don't know like how much damage is gonna be and just, you know if this is friendly or not. But like, there's a whole planet and they they crash land. Exactly where we are. Now granted maybe the wormhole is like close enough that like a ship exiting the wormhole inevitably would always crash land here-ish, but even if that's we're going with that theory, I'd just assume this is like the same time of day, because I mean I assume the planet rotates. And unless the ro wormhole rotates around the planet, orbits the planet at the same rate that the planet rotates, that seems still somewhat unlikely, but I guess somewhat believable. Anyways. Um, you're, you're thrown to the ground from the force of the impact as shrapnel and small rocks zing past your head. It grinds along like some roaring monster, cutting a great scar through the colony and kicking up an enormous cloud of dust. Finally, the ship comes to a creaking, shuddering halt. You and the other colonists carefully crawl out of your hiding places, coughing and rubbing your eyes. The new ship is half buried and obscured by dust, but you can tell it's from Earth. You squint to make out stenciled letters. Helio paws. A hatch opens in its side, and silhouettes begin to emerge. Silhouettes with guns. Soldier. Well, that's actually you know, probably a good thing. I can help us combat the wildlife. Soldiers march out of the dust and quickly surround all of the remaining colonists. More soldiers from two parallel lines from the ship to the square. Or form. There we go. That makes more sense. More soldiers form two parallel lines from the ship to the square, their guns in parade rest, and a lone figure strides down the center towards you. Greetings, fugitives of Earth, the man says, spreading his hands wide. Wait, fugitives? A dismayed murmur ripples through the crowd. The adults exchange significant looks. Chief Engineer Instance tries to slip out of the crowd, but she's stopped by the line of soldiers. The man smiles. He has a, bo a broad, easygoing smile that doesn't match the threatening aura of the soldiers, nor the smoking ruin of the ship behind him. I am Commander Lum, he says proudly. As captain of the Heliopods, I have come to render aid and bring you to justice. I'm getting very mixed messages from this guy. 
Let's listen. He's probably getting an important player here. Six steps forward out of the crowd. You're not the commander of the Heliopos, they say firmly. Governor Utikot was expecting Commander Morikawa. Everyone is surprised. Utikot had been in communication with this ship for how long? I am the captain of the Heliopause, Lum repeats stubbornly, then adds, According to the chain of command, we, uh, sustained significant loss of personnel when we went through the wormhole. You can't help but notice many of the soldiers exchanged looks this time. You wonder how many people had to die before Lum became commander. As the commanding officer, Lum continues, I declare this colony to be under our protection. As such, you all are now subject to the laws of Earth. Seek bows. N n now, they stammer, there's no need for dramatics. We are a diminished colony, as you see. Governor Uticot died in the most recent attack, and Fluorescent passed away a few months ago. Even Technician Haldos is gone. Y y you see, we're, we're quite leaderless. Wait, your mom? What do these Earth cops have wanted from your mom? You notice know, Chief Engineer Instance is being held with her arms behind her back. She glowers at Lum with unbridled hatred. Lum turns the assembled colonists. Well, why don't we fix that? He declares. Say hello to your new governor! You hear a few gasps of shock and outrage. And Lum raises his hands placatingly. Let's not pretend you don't need our help, he says. And we could simply arrest you instead. But there's no need to demoralize your little colony further. Judging from the number of guns on display, you don't think you have a choice in this. No one knows how to react. A new governor from Earth? Nearly a hundred new colonists? Most of them trained soldiers? What does this mean for the colony? Well, I mean, on the bright side, the attacks are probably going to be easier to defend against now. The crowd disperses slowly, and the council members follow Lum back into the heliopause. Presumably to talk about the future of the colony. You hope. You track down your friends. So, what do you think of the, about these new people? Mars asks. I'm glad they're here to save us. Mm, no, I'm excited to make... I'm excited to make new friends with all the strange armed men. <laughs> they're just going to boss us around, or I don't want to share this planet. Um... Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I, I, I'm not really feeling like the top two. And this is a very threatening sort of deal. And clearly they have a, a history with, at the very least, our parents' generation. That doesn't seem great. Um, we'll go with the, they're just going to boss us around. Like, I don't have a problem with sharing the planet. The planet's big enough for the, all of us, but I'm worried that we're going to be there's probably going to be some amount of, uh, militaristic crackdown here. But who knows, granted, that might actually be for for the colony's benefit in the long term, because again, we could probably use some more guns when it comes to fending off the wildlife, so. Who knows, maybe things will work out, but for right now, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical, but willing to have my mind changed if, uh, this new leadership ends up being more effective than what we had previously. Tangent nods. They don't live here. They don't know what it's like. And they're just going to swoop in and act like they're better than us? She hugs her arms around herself. Do you see what they were doing to Instance? The entire colony, now twice as many of you, sets to work on salvaging the wreckage of the Heliopause, tearing it down and combining it with the Stratospherics' remaining engine section. Spirits are high through these new colonists from the Heliopause, or though these new colonists from the Heliopause aren't like any people you've ever met before. With their uniforms and weapons, they're more like an invading force than a rescue. You aren't sure what this means for the colony. Or for your future. Eh. Maybe we can start stop starving to death at least. That that might be good. As the dust settles, you rebuild your colony around this new ship. The Heliopause. The new arrivals, soldiers mainly, are aloof at first. Many see you as fugitives. Together, you build new walls, living quarters, greenhouses, and a massive bunkered garrison. The Stratos Engineering Wing is the only reminder of your old colony. The Heliopause brought rations for another five years. Wait, this is the end? What? The Heliopause brought enough rations for another- Oh, hold on. The Heliopause brought enough rations for another five years, as well as a rich seed bank and working hydroponics. Finally, an end to the slow starvation you felt for years. 
They also have more guns and explosives than you've ever seen in your life. Even the ship has guns. A full stomach, a roof over your heads, and the promise of safety, conveniences, most strato colonists, or convinces most strato colonists to accept the Helios. In turn, the Helios decide that you criminals pose little threat. A grudging peace is brokered between the two groups. You decide they aren't so different, really. There are even Helio children born among the stars, just like you. After a month of hard work, you and your dad move into your new quarters, and you have your own bedroom for the first time in your life. You place a picture of your mother on the shelves beside your bed. Oh, man. You know what? I was skeptical at first, but, like, these guys seem to be doing some good work. Can't deny it. You step out onto your very own balcony to watch the new colony. Its grounds bustling with so many strangers and strange new ideas. You feel something rising in your chest that you haven't felt in some time. Hope. Excitement. What will the new day bring? You better get out of there and find out. You know, let's rush outside to greet the day. If things are as good as it sounds like they may be, like I, I can be happy about this. Like, perhaps a new era of prosperity awaits. <laughs>